Check, check. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Doing good. We're not. Are you planning, or is there plans that I'm setting this up next door for overflow, or are we just? That's what Jude said. So until we, I'm putting the, the TV on next door, and I'm linking this on. So that's the plan. Okay. Um, we have no idea how many people are coming. Good. Thanks, John. Okay, hey Mark. How are you, my friend? Here. <laughs> Come on, man. Stay with me. Um, nine thirteen. That's a good day. <laughs> Was it your birthday? Well, I, uh, that's what it might, that's what I think you're doing. I think we're out. 9.13 you're going for? Yeah. It's like, well, I can deal with that. Yeah, right? I don't, right? I don't yeah. think it's going to happen, but. Thank you. Come on, man. Baby's in the corner. <laughs> Nobody puts baby in a corner. Yeah, apparently they like, they don't need Okay, so far I haven't found one. If I can find one, I will. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, the directional I'm sign. Not, I'm not really worried, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jeff. If I can find it. So. Mm -hmm. Do you know um, Tim Lane? Pardon? Do you know Tim Lane? Um, I don't. It, it sounds familiar, but it's... I've been chasing him from what I've yeah. gathered. Uh, I've owned one. Oh, okay, so yeah. It's part of that whole family that it was. Wasn't it with
Okay, Robin, check, 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 check. This is ambient sound. Now I'm going to go around to the mics. Podium mic, podium mic, check. One, two. Desk mics, one, two, three, one, two. That was mic six. This is mic five, one, two, three, one, two. Mic number four, four. Mic number three, three, three. Three, three. Mic number two, two, two. Uno mic, uno mic, one, one. Bingo, bingo has been called. Okay. I, uh, right now, let's see if you can see what I see. I'm showing the Viking head. I'm just going to do a Super wide shot here of the room, as that's what we have going on right now. Hopefully you could see that. Super 
by an angle. You could hear that. Yes, why well, shot great. Okay, excellent. I'm going to uh, mute the mic. Camera will stay on, and we'll be good to go. So we can get here. Thank you.
I'd like to call the public session to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. I'd like to introduce the seventh grader from Veronica Connor Middle School, Maya Rizzo, to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, for which it stands one nation. One nation Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll call with us this evening. We have Jay Grover, Nicole Novak, Trustees, Jude Kuhn, District Clerk, Dr. Brian Graham, Superintendent, and Ashley Grayer, President, Sue Marston, Vice President. And with us um, on Zoom, we have Joy Lamarca, trustee. And I don't see, do we have anyone else? Glenn. 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 Okay, there's Glenn. Robin. Robin McCreary, trustee. And Glenn Bobeck, trustee, also with us online, online this evening. Just a couple announcements to silence any cell phones. And uh, there are emergency exits directly behind me and directly in front of me in case we need to exit the building. And with that, I would like to ask for a motion to approve this evening's agenda, please, for January 11th. And a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 7 0. And if I can have a motion to approve the minutes from December 14th, 2022. I'll motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, we have some student ambassadors this evening. First from the middle school, Maya Rizzo. Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Rizzo, and I am the MMS of the middle, middle school. The student council has been working hard to plan events that are safe and fun for every student to enjoy. Every year we have our holiday assembly, but sadly we couldn't this year due to the circumstances of the virus. Instead of giving presents to the students, we decided to give back to the community and donated money to the Family Justice Center. However, we still had a spirit week leading up to the winter break, which was one of our normal traditions. 
Our Spirit Week was held virtually this year, and students were allowed to post their picture on a Google Slides document. Our Spirit Days included Character Day, Holiday Colors Day, Ugly Sweater Day, and Tuesday Day. All of our sportswear items have been delivered to our students. Even though it has been hard to plan events, we have come up with some great ideas for all VCMS students to enjoy. And this concludes my presentation for the Student Council. Thank you. Thank you. From this high school, we have from the high school, we have Emily Cohen. Hi, I'm Emily Cohen, and I'm a senior at the high school. I'm the president of our DECA chapter and the treasurer for the Masterminds team and National Honor Society. DECA and Masterminds are happy to be doing all our usual events just virtually this year. Masterminds is competing against other schools in Western New York via Zoom every three to four weeks. Varsity is currently three and one, and we're looking good for playoffs in April. DECA members recently competed in virtual regionals where 22 of us qualified for virtual DECA states, which will run from February 8th to the 15th. Several teams and individuals from Grand Island placed first in their events, and hopefully quite a few of us will qualify for virtual nationals this year in April. And then additionally, the National Honor Society induction video was recently released, and it can be found on SchoolTube. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do anything in person this year, but Mr. Murray and Mr. Gordon put a great video together instead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to correspondence, recognition, and good news. We have something from middle school. Good evening, everyone. I just want to, uh, first of all, just thank our teachers and our students for the hard work that they're doing over the uh, last five weeks, especially during remote instruction. Um, for the most part, it proved to be uh, very successful doing the remote instruction. So I really thank the hard work of our teachers and the hard work of our students. As far as good news of the middle school, I just want to give an update on our construction project that we have in the middle school. I know it's a little bit delayed due to the pandemic and furniture coming in. As soon as that furniture comes in, we will have a more secure and safe entranceway to the middle school. And I want to publicly say, um, so for visitors who are coming to the middle school, hopefully by the end of February, uh, you'll have a new way of uh, coming into the middle school in a better, safe, and secure way. So that's the good news happening right now. And I know um, we really appreciated the support of the board and those board members who were able to uh, tour tonight virtually and in person. So thank you very much. Thank you. Under public comment session, agenda items only. At this time, public comments are invited from those individuals who desire to address the Board of Education on any topic which is on the agenda. Residents who have previously signed up to speak will be recognized by the president when speaking, please identify yourself first. Speak clearly and loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear you. Speakers are requested to limit their remarks to no more than three minutes. Um, you to appoint a spokesperson if a concern is a group concern and if necessary or desire to supplement your verbal presentation. Personal comments toward a member of the community, staff, or Board of Education will not be considered appropriate. appropriate. At this time, I'd like to call up Erin Luises. Luises? Hi, good evening. Uh, normally there's more people here, which is kind of disheartening tonight. Um, a lot of familiar faces on the board, but nonetheless, I've come here literally, this is my third time here this year, and every time I come here, I come here with my hat in my hand literally begging for more school days. I'm done begging. Done. I'm telling now. I'm telling. Where's the spread? Where's your empirical evidence from the state of New York showing that this building or any other school building is causing the spread of this virus? There is none. Why are we not open? Why? I know Dr. Graham and I have gone back and forth a couple times. He defers to Dr. Gail Bernstein. Well, then bring Dr. Gale here and let her answer our questions as overly concerned parents. I said it once, I said it before. My kid is falling apart. Okay? 
My kid, Denise Dunbar, had my children. Miss Palachi has my children now. All right? My son's a, a, a pile of sand without full-time school. It's his social life. It's his thing. He loves school. He excels at school. I don't know if it's your responsibility. Well, it must be your responsibility because you guys are the people in charge. Help him. Help us. I, this, this has gone too far. Hire more people. You fired the curriculum coordinator, right? What happened to that person? Hire people. You got the money? The, the virtual lessons were good. I don't understand we can't, why we can't have more. Is it because of a privacy issue with the union? Don't pay, you pander to the union. Pander to us. I can go a half mile from my house up to St. Stephen's, full-time school. Guess what? No teachers union. That's why. I, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm very disheartened with this whole thing. It's gone on long enough, and it's gone on too far. People are suffering. Our children in this district are suffering. All right? I speak for everybody here. Not only, obviously, of my children first concern, but all the children in the district. It needs to happen. Make it happen, please. I'm done. So thank you. Next, we have Jody Luisos. Well, hello, everyone. As my husband stated, uh, we have two kids, fourth and fifth grade at Cagabine, and this has been really hard on them. Everybody's been really patient with everything going on. Uh, my son is falling apart. It's very concerning. My daughter's handling it better. But she's also social, a little bit more social, talking to her friends, Zoom meets. My son's biggest concern right now is his teacher keeps pestering him about private messages going on between students. They're having Zoom meetings with each other, and he doesn't understand what the problem is. If this is the teacher's biggest concern, I think everybody needs to relax. This is the only socialization these kids are getting. What is the big deal? If it's such a problem, turn off the commenting. I don't know what to tell you anymore. Um, as far as every single time we ask a question, it's Dr. Gail Burstein, Dr. Gail Burstein says no. Well, I want to know why the teacher faculty lounge was allowed to remain open as long as it did if it was such a concern. Um, in the live stream, every parent that I have talked to in every district, every child I've talked to, we are so much happier with the live streaming. What is the big deal when group A is at school? Why can't group B be getting the lessons at home and vice versa? I know some of the teachers are doing it. We know about the privacy issue. I'm sure if you sent home a consent form to every parent, most of them would sign it and agree that it is not a big deal. Okay? We want the best for our kids, and we, we don't know what to do anymore. You've backed us into a corner, and I know you guys get your budget passed every year. Do you want the residents to pass your budget this year? Because this is a really big concern. People are ticked off. Our, our kids are the ones suffering here. And what more, what more can I say? What more can we do? I mean, I've had to make concessions at my job. I have to get a COVID test once a week. I have to wear PPE to work. I have to do, I have to be around chemicals all day. I understand everybody has to make concessions. And the teachers, some of them don't want to do the live streaming, but if it's in the best interest for the children, what is the big deal? And I also have a list here. I stopped at around 100. I could have kept going. Of schools and school districts that have at least one or two of their schools in session five days a week. Most of them are elementary school K to five. There are some that are, you know, K to eight or high school. Um, there are private schools on those lists, but a lot of them are public schools. I don't recognize most of these names because they're out of this area, but if these other districts are able to do it and able to do it safely, what is the problem? Most of these people are telling me that with the barriers and the mask, you don't need the six feet. This is a, a suggestion, not a mandate. 30 seconds. Three minutes? 30 seconds. seconds. All right, well, that's really all I have to say. Is we would just really like some answers, one way or the other. The hybrid is not a good solution for anybody that I'm speaking on behalf of. So what can we do? Thank you. Okay, we do not have anything under curriculum and instruction. So moving on to personnel and instructional. I could have a motion to approve PI1 through PI3, please. And a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? 
Motion carries seven zero. We do have an introduction. We do have an introduction, and I think we have one more person who wanted to speak that approached uh, Mrs. Kuhn over email. Is it David Kelly? David Riley. But let's do the introduction, and then we'll, we'll move back to okay. David Riley, okay? Sounds good. Just one second, Dave. So do we have the introduction, John? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I know um, that Jenna Reiner, Ms. Jenna Reiner, is joining us virtually tonight. So it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Jenna Reiner as the newest member of the BCMS faculty as a probationary sixth grade teacher. Since September, Jenna unexpectedly filled in as a short-term substitute teacher who, uh, for a teacher who went on leave and then subsequently, subsequently retired. She did a marvelous job in that role. She successfully completed the interview process and was appointed to this position. She is compassionate and kind towards her students while providing a space where they can actively engage with the learning in both hybrid and when we were on full remote instruction. Jenna is a graduate of Grand Island High School and Buffalo State College. She earned her bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's degree in literacy. We're very excited to have her officially join our team and look forward to the positive effect that she will have on our students and our colleagues. So welcome, Jenna. Welcome and congratulations. So we're going to circle back to the um, public comment section and we have David Riley. Hi, this is Nicole Gerber. I'm Dave Riley's wife. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm speaking tonight on the solar uh, farm that's being proposed on the Bedell Road property. Uh, my husband and I have both um, spoken about this before at the last two meetings. We're the actually adjacent neighbors to this Bedell Road property. We own the 36 acres that's directly adjacent to it. And we both have spoken at several school board meetings regarding preserving this particular uh, space in this land. We've told you that we are working um, to have a conservation easement on our land. We're working to save our 36 acres. And our long range plan is to create trails and an educational space for the community. So when you think of what you have, you have 54 acres, we have 36 acres, that makes up 90 total acres of unique habitat. This unique habitat, there are New York State threatened in species of concerns on our habitat. This is 90 acres that can be conserved between Whitehaven and Bedell Road, one contiguous green space that we can collectively and communitively save. Um, everything that's on your land is on our land. The insects, the amphibians, the birds, they share this land and this habitat. So we, we look to the school board to take the time, realize what you have in the 54 acres, that it's a very unique piece of property, and there's a really special opportunity now to save this land, to save its plant and animal species by deciding to pursue a land conservation easement. Collectively, we can save the 90 acres total, we can save the habitat, and we can make this a community opportunity where people can learn and appreciate the acreage, they can learn about the species, and we can actually preserve Grand Island green space for many generations to come. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Moving on to uh, personnel non-instructional. If I could have a motion to approve non-instructional PNI 1 through PNI 3, please. And a second. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objection? Any abstention? Motion carried 7 0. Now on to the finance section with Dr. Harris. Good evening. Um, I have a couple of action items and then a couple of informational items. Um, the first item is a book donation that was received uh, by Sidway and it was, there is an attached um, letter providing more information as well as a website if you would like to find out more about um, who donated the book. But I thought it was uh, very lovely to see that they provided a book for every student um, to the 
uh, Sidway um, Elementary School. So that is the first item. The next item is budget transfers over 15,000, which was for legal services um, for the capital project. It's just paying the bill out of the correct codes to properly file uh, the final cost report in the end. Uh, the next item is the a solar update. Um, this is just providing the board with uh, some of the same information you've seen in the past. Um, it has been more of a discussion topic, so I'm just trying to see if the board wants us to take action to move forward with um, our legal team, working with their legal team to negotiate account, out a contract, uh, as well as seeking um, communication with the New York State Education Department on the approval of a lease agreement because of the length of the agreement, uh, New York State Education Department does have to say that it is okay to move forward with and um, us communicating with the National Grid on the NYSERDA credits. Um, if the board were to take action, and this is written also in the uh, little subject area, if the board were to take action, I would then have to come before the board again to approve a contract. So this is not just the end all be all with this, it's multiple steps. Um, in the phase of the contract, if there were things that the board did not like or approve of, we could always say no. So it's not the end all be all. I do want to express that. Um, those were all of my action items, A through C. Okay, great. If I could have a motion to approve A through C, please. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries seven zero. Okay. Um, item D is an appropriation status report, and I noticed probably 20 minutes before this meeting that when we clicked the prior year, it went from July 1 of 2019 to December of 2020. So if you actually look at your numbers, your budget looks like it's 120 something million instead of our normal uh, 64. So I will correct that and provide you with an updated appropriation status. You can see how the first half of the school year has actually went. Um, so you will get another one for the next meeting. I'll have the uh, corrected updated information. I just wanted to make sure you saw that just in case you were wondering how our budget doubled. I wish it was that case, but it's not. Um, there is also budget transfers under 15,000. This, um, I think the only thing on there was an accounting course that uh, an employee in the business office is participating in. So we did do a budget transfer to cover um, that course. And then the last item I have on here was um, the unemployment information. I spoke briefly about that at the last meeting. This is just providing you not only with the uh, letter where it says pay 50%, but it shows you um, the last couple of quarters of bills. And um, it also shows you where we have budgeted in the past, how much we paid in the past versus where we are currently. Um, and there is a notation on there that the fourth quarter was not yet received. Um, so I'm not sure um, what that bill will be. Uh, and then you have your normal what I'm hoping will just be uh, normal unemployment bills going forward. But um, as I get more information, I'll share that out. Is there any questions on any of those items? Um, I just actually have a quick question just to go back to solar really quick. Okay. Um, and it's just to refresh my memory, I apologize. So the company is proposing development on give or take around 12 of our 54 acres, correct? Yes. So uh, the remaining acres are going to remain undisturbed. Yes. Meaning they're not going to be developed. Okay. Yes. Okay. And and okay. that um, when I had spoke uh, with um, the other company about conserving, because you know we I did take into consideration all the things that were being provided, so we had discussion. Um, there is still the opportunity to do that on the remaining acres. Um, you can literally do both if that's the direction that the board wanted to go into um, developing the 12 and then what is the possibility for conservation on the rest of the land. It's something that we can definitely discuss. Keeping the green space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Not a problem.
Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, I have two action items tonight. Um, if we could, um, if I could have action approving the CSE and the CPSE program recommendations, I would appreciate it. A motion for items A and B, please. I'll move. I'll move. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I think that would be the second on that one. Okay. And working under policy, so that brings us to the superintendent's report with Dr. Brown. Good evening, everybody. Thank you to our visitors here today and people watching us online. Uh, in the superintendent report today, I'm going to focus on COVID-19. Uh, at our last board meeting on December 14th, I shared with you that the governor continues to share that there is overwhelming data that schools are a safe place for teaching, learning, and working during this pandemic. In his December press conference, the governor displayed information regarding how and where the virus is spreading across New York State. This information indicated that 74% of the instances are based on small household gatherings. Furthermore, he expressed that educational employees are responsible across the state for one and a half percent of the cases, and that students are responsible for less than half of one percent. As of today, uh, we do not have any evidence that the virus has transmitted uh, within our schools. And of course, that's very, very good news. Upon returning from our Christmas break, we did receive reports from some students or parents, as well as some employees who uh, became positive uh, or have to quarantine because they're a close contact of someone who's positive. So you may have seen an influx in letters that I've been sending home recently, and that is uh, catching up over vacation break as families or employees are communicating with us. Uh, today and Friday, I shared with our employees that there is a website to go to if you want to check if you are eligible as a school employee to get the vaccine. Uh, so that website has been shared with all of our employees here in the district. It's my understanding that the governor last Friday announced that educa uh, educational employees will be moved to uh, phase 1B. Uh, right now in Erie County, we're in 1A, but in phase 1B, uh, there will be an administration of vaccine for those eligible individuals. Also, there's a second website that I shared with all of our employees to get additional information from Erie County with respect to being notified when uh, phase 1B goes into place. So as you might imagine, there is great interest in Erie County from educational employees uh, all throughout Erie County, uh, very eager to sign up for the vaccine. Do we have any questions from the board right now about any of those items? I would know, I do. I, I just would like to bring up the whole Dr. Bernstein thing in formal. Where is their disconnect and what I would like to know, first of all, what her reason is, if it's not spreading in the school district, I think we need to ask her. And I would also like to know what our superintendents who is doing in Western New York to push for our schools to be open. Okay. It's, it is ridiculous. And, and I know there are some states across the school, uh, schools across the state that are open. My brother is in the district where his kids go um, an, an extra day, but they are not in the same designated cluster as we are. So I, I think for me, um, I would like to see a pushback on, on, on Dr. Bruce. I mean, our governor is, you know, continually blaming the governor. He is clearly on television saying it's not being taught by schools. So I would like to know what that disconnect is. And I would also like to know what her, reason, what her reasons are, right, if, it, if it's not proven. I mean, they keep saying that we're, we're basing everything on science. Well. The science and, and the numbers are showing that it is not in the district. And as you know, we have tested how many non-symptomatic people, right? And, and I, my frustration is just overall that it is towards our, our, our reigning bodies. You know, it's, it, it's unfair and, and our kids are suffering, for sure. Um, and then I would like some clarification on masks, six feet, and the protections. 
is it a recommendation or a mandate is my question when we asked that question in october uh, the department of health was very clear that social distancing is the number one reason that helps to prevent the transmission of the virus so when schools in erie county are in hybrid and there isn't a school district that's 100 percent fully k-12 to in session okay so when schools are in hybrid it's a natural social distancing right we can guarantee that kids are socially distant in classrooms and that is the number one risk mitigator to prevent transmission. So in, in October, when I asked the question, it was very clear that that was the preferred number one risk mitigator, which is social distancing. And the school districts in Erie County are following that, and quite honestly, that may very well be why there is less transmission in schools. So is it a mandate for the Park? Yes, it is the New York State Department of Health's mandate. And Brian, uh, the vaccinations 1B group, when will that be completed? Do you have any idea about that? When and once the 1B group gets vaccinated, so the teachers, staff, P through 12 schools, pre K through 12 schools, we fall into that 1B group. When that's completed, first of all, my first question is when will that, when is that expected to be completed? They know this is a fluid situation and that date could change. And then once that is completed, will that mandate of six feet of distance, will that change at all for us to be able to make any changes? Right. So if I, if I think I understand your question, once the vaccinations begin for educational employees, will we see the state uh, reduce or relax social distancing? Not, not once they begin, but when are they expected to be completed okay. for our group? Because I know right now they're beginning and we're calling, we're making appointments to get the vaccines now. Um, we have some staff, for example, at my school district that they have appointments this week. They were able to get them this week. Some, some it's next week. So um, I, I'm not sure, you know, I don't, I wasn't able to get an appointment today. So I'm not sure how long it will take for everyone in Western New York to be vaccinated or everyone say just on Grand Island that's in the PK through 12 system. But once they are all vaccinated, will that mandate change in terms of the six feet of distance being required? I don't have an answer to that, but I, my understanding is that it's, it could be, could very well be February before we see uh, educational employees being vaccinated. There are so many across the state that I don't have an idea of when that would conclude. Um, so I guess, you know, we're not, I'm not sure right now how to answer that. Those would be my Dr. Bernstein questions. When will it be completed? And once it's completed, will that uh, six feet requirement change for us? Brian? Yes, Glenn. I'm just, you're just curious. It, it was interesting. I understand today um, West Seneca opened and I, and I think a hybrid model, right? Although I don't think anything's changed from a dynamic from September for them. But in any event, um, have, has, has the governor given any indication at all as to what might change or what might happen that will allow schools to open fully? Yeah, I have not heard that, but I think all of us you know, that's our goal. That's our desire. Uh, I, understand, I understand that's our goal. Is has, has, has there been any indication from the governor at all? Not that, that I may allow schools to open up 100%. I haven't heard the governor say anything specifically about schools opening 100% yet. I really think we need to figure out a way to start that conversation because, you know, and our community members are frustrated. We are as frustrated as you are. And, and, and on a personal level, there's not a lot of us that doesn't have kids in the district. And as a board member, you know, we are here to give the best, you know, education to our kids and just sit here and there's no conversation as to when we can bring our kids back to school. Correct. Uh, mine, I know our teachers are doing a fantastic job. This is no, all teachers aside, I think everybody's doing their best, right? But as a government, we're failing. We're not even pushing them. They're not. Like, they need to start talking about it, right? Because it's just ridiculous. And, and, and again, my frustration is with the situation, not with you know the district. Oh, I just think that we need to start pushing, and we need to figure out how to do that. Like 
She can just say, oh, we're not talking about it. Well, well why not? I mean, we have millions of kids that are suffering. And I think we need to start pushing. I mean, we're in January, mid-January. So is the superintendent's group doing anything to move that conversation forward? Well, I, it, interestingly, in October, um, the Erie and Niagara School Superintendents Association was a strong advocate uh, communicating with Erie County Department of Health and beyond. When we moved into an orange cluster, our association did write a letter to the governor because the mandate of testing in the orange cluster was not uh, attainable. And so we feel strongly that our letter actually helped and that we were able to get our letter in the hands of the governor's office and that you then we all saw a change and a pivot from testing uh, 20 percent uh, of all the students faculty and staff to 20 percent over a four-week period which that's exactly what we're doing right now so we do have a very strong advocacy group i would also suggest that i think as a group we've talked about perhaps this board creating a resolution uh, that could be drafted by the board and approved by the board talking about the reopening of schools 100%. So that is an option as well. I, I just, this whole cluster thing, I mean, numbers have been going, you know, whatever, and we haven't, we haven't moved, right? Like, there has to be better direction from our health department and our government because they really are holding what we do hostage. And um, it's unfair. I mean, it's unfair. So there has to be a way to start the conversation. I mean, they have to start talking about it. It seems as though the superintendent's group is a very powerful advocacy group because when the testing came about from the governor, I thought for sure it would be completely remote for a very long time. Given 20% a week, we would never be able to comply with that. It would be out of our reach because we have so many more students than you know other other schools in the area. We have a, a large student population and getting 20% even parent permission every week to test students would be challenging for us. So that really helped us be able to maintain what we currently have. My question would be, would you be able to work as a superintendent's group to get another letter to the governor you know asking if he could give us some guidance regarding opening once all the vaccines have been given to the, I don't want to see staff. Before the vaccines it's going to be for our kids and to be back way before vaccines well, well they're doing them now well i, I so that, i think but it's, it's now it's not in february yeah. it's not in march and no disrespect to you, I, I, for myself, I want answers now. When can we get our kids back to school? Does and if I go back and work, if you want to do that resolution, I know you and I talked about it. I am happy to draft something. Well, I think the vaccines are happening now, right? I mean, the teachers are getting that good. I think school there. nurses in 1A are able to um, get the vaccine and maybe physical therapists and occupational therapists, but we've it is not open yet for teachers. Teachers can go to the website, they can request an appointment, they can do those things. But we're in 1A, when 1B goes into effect, then uh, people in that subgroup, which would include educational employees, would have access to that. Now, would Niagara County be different from Erie County? Because my, yes. my 1B went into effect today for Niagara County. So I don't know if that's any different. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I heard that it's going to be delayed, but it, it could very well be uh, that educators are getting appointments. All right, so I'm I'm working under the assumption here that that in January, teachers will be vaccinated and staff will be vaccinated. So I'm, I'm wondering if we can have that superintendent's group at least get some guidance on, you know, what is the plan for school reopening, especially now that 1B has opened up in some of the counties in New York State, if not, you know, very shortly, all the counties. I don't know, if, Nicole, I know you're in Erie County working, Jay, you're working in Erie County. Has your ability to sign up been opened yet? There's been a link sent out. I, I have heard of people that have had successfully scheduled appointments. I don't know when that would be, though. Right. So I don't, and I heard, again, yeah, heard there's only one place maybe that's available for, so. 
It's it's a start. It right? is. It's yeah. Start. So I just um, we don't we're start. in line. We've been waiting and waiting. Like, yeah. we're, we're waiting for this, and then we're waiting for this, and now vaccines are coming up. And you know, disrespect mm -hmm. because I mean that is definitely something that's important. But I I think we need to act. Like we just well, yeah, it's a good time to act because one B is happening now. Right. I mean, it's again, I, I I am vaccine aside. I mean, I mean, have you been to the eye doctor? Have you been to the dentist? Like. It's, it's just ridiculous. And I, I just think we need to take a hardcore stand. Sure. Get our One quick question, O'Brien. Is the, is the cluster designation even relevant now? Is the, the model that the schools are operating under? I feel like they've flexed on that so many times that, right? Like it started with this hard line of percentages, right? And like slowly kind of adjusted as we've progressed here, or? Yeah, but there has been some flexibility on the state's part with respect to testing, but the county is still in orange, right? You can't, exactly. can't go to a restaurant sure. because we're in orange. Yeah. So um, so we're following the orange yeah. mandate, which has changed, yeah. right? It, it's definitely much more flexible, and we're accomplishing that task as a school district now. We have our limited service laboratory license and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, so we're following that mandate because it is a mandate. That's what we're doing. Even though it has changed, we're still following it. And we've adapted to those changes. Um, you know, and I think the frustration, too, is, you know, when we're in orange, we can go over the bridge to Niagara Falls and, you know, do things that we can't do here in Erie County, which is, you know, uh, absurd and shows that there is um, definitely some... Uh, arbitrariness, I guess, you know, between why is Erie County orange and Niagara County is not. So, uh, you know, right now our schools are open because we're able to test. Um, our schools are open because we did advocate to change the testing uh, protocols and that has been successful. And, you know, uh, vaccines are starting to roll, so that's positive and optimistic. So things are moving in a good direction. They may not be moving as quickly. And we can continue to advocate and this board and continue to advocate. Okay, let's uh, work on a resolution. We email will send it around. Does, do we want to do that? This, yeah, we okay. and I have talked about it. Good. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll look at it you know, as a board, and hopefully for the next board meeting, we can have something ready to go. Can I ask one more question? Sure. The, uh, like, so the community spread of students that we're being made aware of, uh, are those parents calling district? Is there a daily health screening form? Yeah. How are we being made? Yeah, there's there's three ways. You know, okay. parents and students are self-reporting. Okay. Okay. Uh, employees are self-reporting, and of course, we are in constant daily communication with the Erie County Department of Health. So there's three different ways that we're receiving information. Okay. Nicole, you were gonna add. Yes, I have a question. So we don't even have any. If we're not in the warm zone, we're not in the yellow zone. We're just Plain zone, if area kind of goes back to that, because I know our numbers are lower than some areas that don't have anything. We don't even have a plan for when we can bring the students, like, they have not told us when we can bring the students back up. Sure. As soon as the state relaxes the six feet of social distancing, which is the number one, you know, risk mitigator that we're following in every school district, that's going to give us the opportunity to bring more kids into classrooms. But we can't put 24 kids in a class and expect them to be six feet socially. So we them, like, we have barriers, we have masks, but it can be yeah. reduced to all, three Yeah, all of that has been communicated once in, by me in October, and uh, that was also communicated to the New York State Department of Health beyond the Erie County Department of Health. So it is something that is that we feel strongly that if that mandate is relaxed, we can do much more for our students. Let me ask the question, and I know I think we can, I think we answer it to the question, but just to have it out there again, I know we have asked Dr. Bernstein about the conversation about opening new school, and I think I recall that the answer was as long as there is a pandemic, our schools will remain closed, something along those lines, maybe not that dark, I think we had communicated that before. She did say that, and she also added that social distancing was her preferred mm -hmm. method of keeping kids safe. And I sent the same request to the New York State Department of Health. So, so yeah, we are, you know, I, I, I think it's just very important, right, for our community to know that we are working very hard to improve our hybrid model. And in that work, we're also working very hard to do whatever we can to bring kids back. 
uh, more kids back into the classroom. But we cannot, uh, we have to follow the guidance from the Department of Health. Uh, I would be putting my own certification at risk if I did not follow that guidance. So as a governing body, when we're crafting a resolution, we have to take into account, and, and we have a wonderful school board that understands the law. So we have to put into account you know, a, a, a resolution that isn't going to put our Board of Education at risk of not following the law. You're fading in an outline. Could you just repeat that, Glenn? It's it's not it's not the Department of Health. It's the governor of New York State. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The governor ultimately has to say. Sure. True. So. All right. Is it okay if I move forward? To hybrid report. Uh, no. Hybrid the hybrid report. report. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. So uh, it's just important, I think, for the board. You know, every week I send an, an update to the entire um, all of our employees. Regarding COVID and how it relates to the county as well as uh, Grand Island, just for our board here, there have been 1 million residents in Erie County who have been tested for COVID-19 since last March. 45,000 have been confirmed since last March, and uh, 1,297 people have died since last March here in Erie County. Uh, additionally, there have been 968 individuals on Grand Island who have tested for COVID-19, uh, who tested positive since last March. And I think, Jude, you told me that that number jumped to 1,000, I think, recently, maybe as of today. Uh, as of December 11th, Western New York had an infection rate of 8.5%, which was an infection rate uh, over seven days. And then Erie County uh, infection rate was 7.6%. As the board knows, I keep track of the week-to-week -week change here on Grand Island. Uh, on September 4th, there were 152 positive cases. Uh, then on the 11th, there were 156, so a change of four on the island. And as I keep track of that, it, you know, each week it would either go up by three or four. One week on October 2nd, it went up by 12. The 9th, the four, it went up by four. The 16th of October, four. The 23rd, five. The 30th, 11. So a little bit of a bump at the end of October. November, it went from 11 in one week to 25 in the next week, to 32 in the next week after, to 60 in the next week after. That was November 16th. Then to 66 on November 23rd, 78 on November 30th, and that was a 20% change from one week to the next. From November 30th to December 11th, there was a 29% change from 78 in one week to 135. So I am happy to report that as of December 11th, that was the highest net week-to-week -week change here on Grand Island. The next week on December 18th, it went from 135 to 109, so it went down from 29% to 18% net change. And from 109, it changed to 86 on December 23rd, so only a 12% change. Then to 78 on January 4th, which was a 10% change. It did bump up on January 8th, the last time we looked to 101, which was a 11.5% uh, change. So uh, when you plot this on a graph, um, you know, obviously the peak was when we were at a 29% change. And then that slope or that uh, graph is, is heading downward. So we'll continue to look at that. And that is specific to Grand Island uh, positive cases. Any questions about that? Uh, I do want to recognize in my COVID report that our nursing team has conducted well over 464 BINACS now rapid tests since December 15th, and we've had two positive cases that we've identified out of the 464. We will continue to test 20% of our students, faculty, and staff until such time as we move out of the orange zone cluster. Okay. Just or what we do with those results where it's reported. Sure. So, um, sure. So when we have tested the 464 individuals, and that's a mixture of students, faculty, and staff, that all of that information of the 464, um, and as we do that each day, all that information is put into a database called an eclair system. 
And I want to thank Robin Quitek, who works with Jill Marsh, uh, Cheryl Cardone, and our nurses to accurately get that information put into the database. The good news about that is that there are more negative cases uh, being contributed to the database by school districts who are uh, fulfilling the rapid testing uh, mandate by the state. So that hopefully we'll, we will see positivity rates decline over time as more uh, people are identified as negative or, or, or not, not positive with COVID-19. So would Dr. Bernstein and Governor Cuomo be able to see the results like separately, not as a whole, like they're seeing what's coming up from the school district? Because I think I think if they're not seeing that separate, then they, they need to see that separate, right? Like that we're testing the school communities across Western New York and these are what the results are. I, I, I there's power in the information, right? I mean clearly we have two when we've been over four hundred, you know what I, I it's a great defense, right? Yeah, and I think it's uh, as much as this has been a challenge for our district, um, our team has done a great job and we've adapted to it. And now we have um, important information that's going into the database. So it could, you know, it could very well help, you know, down the road get us out of orange. Yeah, I just, I just wonder if it makes sense to share that information separately outside of the database, like as a superintendent group, but there's a lot of error. A spreadsheet or something and maybe send it to them you know separately i don't know I, i'm sure they're seeing it i'm sure they're looking at the whole picture right i, I don't know it's just it's just a suggestion yep. because it sends a powerful statement i would also like to just thank publicly Anne-Marie stewart our nurses dana deluke don frozalone tara Kowalik, Lori brown darlene ryan and mary everett for their work in adapting to the uh, testing as well as our athletic training team Led by Jeff Green. They've really done an outstanding job. So that does include my presentation for COVID-19. Thank you. Any other questions before I move on to the hybrid virtual model discussion? Okay, under Board of Education Report, we have a hybrid virtual model discussion. Uh, I know, Dr. Graham, you were looking at possibly uh, Wednesdays. I don't know if you want to start us off with talking a little bit about that. Sure. Let me give you a, a, some information. So coming back on January 14th, we did have an increase of families choosing 100% virtual at our high school and at our middle school in particular. So right now at our high school, 22% of the students are 100% virtual and 20% of our middle school kids are 100% virtual. At Huth, Kegabine, and Sidway, there was, there was some movement at Huth. So 16% of the students at youth are 100% virtual. Kegabine, there wasn't much movement, it's 13%. At Sidway, it's 8%. So uh, just wanna share that the district average is 17%. Uh, when we started the school year, our district average was 13%. Any questions about that? So as the board knows, uh, we've been working and looking at ways to improve our hybrid model. In grades 6 through 12 this week, we announced that the synchronous lessons being taught <clears throat> would go from 20-minute classes to 30-minute classes starting this Wednesday. So that has been in place and will, or will be in place for all of our students grades 6 through 12. And um, we do have, and it was mentioned in our public comment session, we do have teachers experimenting with live streaming their lessons. I would, um, I'm would. i going to see if Mr. Laureate is available just to speak a little bit. I know that his math team at the high school is uh, probably the most experienced at the high school with uh, trying to live stream. Mr. Laureate, do you have a moment just to speak to that? Sure. Yeah, our math department has been live streaming for some time now. Back when we were hybrid in the fall, they were also doing this for most of their classes. Um, some of our science teachers have now started to you know, experiment with them, many of our science teachers. And we have some other teachers in other departments, like our business department and some other areas where they are also looking at live stream. And they have been live streaming some classes on the off days for our students so that everyone is able to participate in real time. Um, and so, you know, it's going fairly well for those teachers. And I think that, you know, once they get comfortable doing that, our students are kind of comfortable with logging in on those days and 
getting them the ability to participate with their classes, as I said, in real time synchronously. Mr. Luria, at um, faculty meetings, have some of these teachers had an opportunity to share their experiences? Um, we haven't shared that out at faculty meetings. Um, I mean, some of the math teachers, we, you know, one of our concerns in moving forward too quickly with it is the connectivity ability and the ability of our network to handle that. I, I think I know that that's one thing that um, we haven't talked about it, you know, at a board meeting. And I think that we were a little nervous in the beginning to go too quickly with it to make sure that we could handle it as a network. And I know Robin and I have had many conversations about that in the last month. Um, and there is some concern that if everyone were doing it, that whether or not, you know, that would affect the, the speed of the internet for everyone else. So there's some talk about that. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. I know on Monday, January 4th, there was a, a broadband issue from BOCES. It wasn't a Grand Island issue, but there was a regional issue with broadband on the 4th, but I, I know that that has been corrected. Mrs. Marston? I just wanted to say, so on Wednesdays, would we not have the same amount of people logged in if we went full, or would it be different? I mean, because all of our kids right now are logging in on Wednesdays, correct? Mm -hmm. Some teachers work from home, some teachers work from their classroom. So some are using their own broad, broadband or internet from home. Yeah. That's what I thought, I just for clarification. Well, the fact that it's 30 minute classes, what will the start time change of the, at the beginning of the day, what time will the classes yeah. begin then for six through 12 for the 30 minute classes? I think for the middle school and the high school, the start time is 8 a.m. Is that right, Mr. Laurie? Yeah. yeah, I believe it's correct. It's also posted on our website under each of our individual page, pages under the quick links. And I believe it's eight o'clock for both. Um, I think the middle school, I think ours ends at 150. The middle school might end a little sooner than that. I know there's are multiple emails sent home as well. Yeah, the communication yeah, has been fun. great the last few weeks. We appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. The parents appreciate that. Yeah. And if anyone's unsure, they can just go on the website of our quick links and see what time the kids Wednesday they will start school. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. <laughs> So I, I, I would also like to add that there are pockets of teachers in our schools. Um, I know the middle school and our elementary schools who are starting to experiment as we talk more about live streaming. Um, so I definitely appreciate the feedback that we get from our community. I'm very pleased that our teachers are starting to experiment with that. Um, and I'm also very pleased uh, that our teachers have done an amazing job. It's very different than it was between March and June. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, if, if we, we definitely need to let teachers experience this, to communicate with each other, to learn from each other. Um, and that makes things move uh, very nicely for us. You know, if we, if we, talk, if we do find that it's working and we move in that direction, it could also be done on rotation, right? If we're worried about an activity, right? I mean, even if, you know, it could be one more day a week, right? So our kids are now in front of a teacher four days a week instead of three, right? I mean, I mean, everything would be fantastic. And I, I love that we're experimenting with it. So I appreciate that and say thank you. And, you know, if it comes down to internet, right, we can certainly maybe do something on the rotation. Just a thought. Thank you. So uh, also, as far as, <clears throat> Uh, ideas and things that we should be brainstorming as a board. I'd like to get the board's opinion on a possible enhancement to the Sidway hybrid model. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what what I would be suggesting for the board to work with me and look at is uh, asking children uh, and parents, of course, but having children in the Ada L cohort come in Wednesday morning uh, for a half day, and then the M through Z cohort uh, come in uh, Wednesday afternoon for a half day, which would give our youngest children, uh, of course, two and a half days of face-to-face -face instruction. Obviously, the Wednesday would be focused on reading and writing and mathematics. <clears throat> the reason why I'm bringing this to the board now is that um, if, if the board uh, approves us moving in this direction and exploring, we would want to send a survey out to the Sidway families that are 
hybrid and gather their interest, uh, understand any issues that could be relevant to them if we did switch, say, in February to this model, uh, understanding that there could be child care issues uh, first and foremost. Uh, and then the board should understand that if we did move in this model, it would be an economic cost to the transportation department. Uh, Teresa and Ruby have been working on that cost. Teresa Lisa Day shared with us that just in wages, it would be a $40,000 increase to the transportation budget to accommodate the bus drivers, uh, picking up the Sidway children, bringing them to school, picking up at half day and bringing them home, and then picking up the half day M to Z population, bringing them to school, and of course, bringing them home at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, it would be an increase in wages of $40,000 for 19 weeks, starting in February. Um, and we would not be recommending that for Hughes or Kegelbein at this time, uh, because it would be triple the cost of uh, transportation wages. And also, um, right now at, Keg at Sidway, we have two teachers who are dedicated to the 100% virtual kids in kindergarten and first grade, but we don't have enough teachers to individually by grade level pick up the 100% virtual kids who would, be, who would be home. So if you follow me, on Wednesday, if our hybrid kids come into school, we still have a teacher attending to the 100% virtual kids in kindergarten and the 100% virtual kids in first grade. And our 100% virtual kids are the lowest in the district at Sidway. Uh, at Youth and Kegelbein, the numbers are greater, and we don't have enough teachers to teach by grade level uh, spread out for second, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's not that we would totally abandon the idea but it's far more economical and reasonable to look at this model for Sidway first, uh, particularly with their youngest kids who are in need of more face-to-face -face time. So at this time, I'd like to just hear from the board some, some reactions or ideas. Start with Nicole. Um, why the half day, one group half and half day the other instead of one Wednesday, one group, and the next Wednesday, the whole other group? Yeah, that is a model that we could look at I think the, originally the Sidway teachers were hopeful to do a half day, half day. So we would canvas our parents first to see if that was reasonable. And then we could brainstorm ideas if it didn't look like it was reasonable for our parents. So what was the benefit for the half day, half day, or a full day, one week, and a full day, and that's yeah. just... Just the continuity of the, the curriculum and presenting the curriculum on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Children would, there would be a, a seamless continuity and they would uh, be able to benefit from that as opposed to waiting another week to see the teacher face to face. Brian. Yeah, Glenn. Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm not suggesting this is the right idea or not. Is, has any any thoughts given to having the entire midway class be um, half day, morning, afternoon, every day, as opposed to just on Wednesday? Yeah, it would be a significant economic consideration. And here's, here's why it would be. So as you know, when we changed the start and end times of all of our buildings and went to a hybrid face-to-face -face Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, many of our bus drivers didn't actually lose hours. Some did, but many didn't. By doing a midday run Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then doing a special model, you would be adding uh, hours to the bus driver's days on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, at least, at the very least, two hours if we did a half-day, half-day model, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So not only would it be $40,000 to do this on Wednesdays at Sidway, but the economic cost to do it every day would, was astronomical. When we looked at it in August, I think it was a quarter million dollars. So, um, so that was the challenge. That's the challenge. Is is it increases the wages, you know, for transportation, the mileage, and because we we changed the start and end times, uh, some some drivers would be could also be overtime perhaps as well. How soon could that survey go out to parents asking? about the half day and if they'd be interested in that and 
because I'm definitely all for you know any way we can increase face time with teachers and students and getting students to school another half day. I think that would be great. I haven't developed it yet, but I'm sure it'll be out by the end of the week. Okay. If we looked at what that day looks like, um, how many hours of in person would the kids get through? Yeah, two and a half. Three. It would be like two hours and fifteen minutes oh. or something along those lines. I, I definitely think it's worth looking at, and I yeah. I know we're talking forty thousand dollars, but it's forty thousand dollars that's the right? Yeah. And, and you know some of our costs have been a little different over the last year and a half, and a year only coming up on a year, right? So. We don't have as much expenditures on sports and different yeah. things. But you know, we have a million dollars would be a different conversation. But I think forty thousand dollars is reasonable to get this back into the class. Definitely. I guess you know we're going to have to look at what for the families, survey the families, and then what we're going to do to clean between our morning and afternoon. I guess and then that might be a concern of the parents as well too, right? So. I, I definitely think it's something we, we should explore. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of it, definitely. Yeah, no, I, would we be able to provide any flexibility as far as the cohorts? Of, like, say there was just uh, an eight year just couldn't come in in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, just like, you know, they had a sibling with different class needs that would be, you know, going to a different cohort in the hybrid, would we be able to accommodate? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and we we were doing that anyways. Yeah. Um, so it, it, we would we would only have difficulty accommodating it if the class size was too big. As a result of the request to change. All right. Thank you. That's that's all I wanted to share today. Yeah. Any other questions? Sure. Can I just ask ahead, a question? Joy. Um, if you're bringing in the first half of the alphabet in the in the morning and then the the latter half in the afternoon, is there going to be time for cleaning and sanitization before the second batch of children come in? I'm thinking of the buses. I'm thinking of the classrooms because now you're bringing them both in on the same day. Yeah, it's an excellent question, and Sue Merson also asked the same, Joy. So. That would be something that we would obviously want to have in place uh, before we um, made any decision to move forward. And it's not I mean, I think it's a really, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think it's a great idea for them to have that additional time. And um, I would definitely be, you know, in favor of the survey. Thank you. Did you have another question? I do, and it's unrelated to this topic. So if you have another question, anybody on this? Well, I was just going to piggyback off what Nicole said earlier that, and what Joy was just saying now, that if it it looks like it's not feasible to do it that way, with could we then investigate the other option? Because I'd be for either whatever whatever option works out and gets students more time with teachers is is something I would support. Very good. So total difference, but where are we with getting Chromebooks to our I don't know, whatever class it was? Hey Denise, are you on with us right now? I am. Uh, yes, so I am. Just asking about Chromebook distribution and where we are right now at Sidway. Sure, our first graders all have their Chromebooks. They had them before the holidays. And our kindergartners will soon have iPads. The tech department is currently gathering every available iPad. We've made a clean sweep through Sidway and collected them all. They're reconfigurating, sanitizing, and whatnot, and should be ready in the next week or so for the kindergartners. So have we received everything in order or do we still have stuff out on order? Ruby, the question, and I don't know if Robin, you're here as well. The question from Sue is, have we received everything we've ordered? Are there any, is there anything on that order right now? I don't know if Robin is here. Um, from my knowledge, we have received um, the items. I think initially uh, around the break, we were waiting 
or like either nine or 19. Um, I think all of that came in. It was really just the transition from the different grade levels, um, cleaning off out the information, making sure all the updates are there, uh, anything that need to be taken off or put on is happening, and then um, scheduling the dates for pickup. But I think K is the only grade that's left from my understanding. Um, what I can do uh, for, um, even though I think the next meeting is more of a workshop, we can make sure that the board gets uh, compiled information of everything that was received in and, and what the final plan is to make sure uh, Kay gets those items, if that works. Yeah, because for me, I, was, I guess I was more wondering if we received everything in order, right? So it's, it's, it's encouraging to hear that we have everything and, and everything will be distributed. So that's fantastic, thank you. Yeah, you're correct, Ruby. And, and the tech department is working really hard on getting those iPads ready. Um, we were hoping for this week. It might happen this week, but I'm a little bit more optimistic that it'll be next week. Okay. All right, we'll provide an update um, for the next uh, meeting, just even if it's an, a final update to say everything is out to um, the students, um, but she'll receive an update. Thank you. Hey, Ruby, I'm going to ask you to do a commercial for Chromebook or iPad insurance. Right. Why do I have to do a commercial? <laughs> <laughs> you do far better commercially things than I do, right? <laughs> well, I guess I guess from the business and finance department, would you encourage our families to purchase the insurance? And I think it's very very uh, economical. Is this right? commercial now, or is yeah. this a later commercial? Well, right, right now. It, just <laughs> because we do get a lot of people who watch our board meetings and. It's just a reminder, people can go to My School Box, right, and yeah. choose Chromebook insurance, and I think yeah. it's a very small fee. Uh, do you recall, Ruby, what the fee is? I believe it's $10. Oh, I do. <laughs> and... Right, so $10. And I advise, since all of the uh, bills go out from the business and finance um, office, and I have seen um, anything ranging from when people do not have Chromebook insurance, anything from $100 to a $300 bill going out to a family, um, which in a non-pandemic time is still a lot, but it's it's huge now. It's $10, you go on to My School Bucks, you select your student's information and you purchase it annually. And it's really just insurance for any type of accidental damage that could occur to a Chromebook or a device because the iPads um, are also on there offering the same type of coverage. Um, there is a small deductible, which I think the first time it's $20 and then it goes up from there, but it's a heck of a lot less than the $100 or $300 bill that comes from the business and finance office. So go online and purchase it and we will probably send out another uh, email blast reminding parents as well. Thank you. Nice job. Thanks. So is there an option just to purchase it for the rest of your kids' school year? Uh, I am guilty. Um, <laughs> we can definitely look into that option if that makes if parents want to go on there once and be like, oh, my kid's in high school. I want it for four years. Here's the 40 bucks and leave me alone. Um, so we can definitely look into that. I, it's just a question for someone like myself. It would be easier. Yes, absolutely. I'm guilty. I've had to, I've had to remind myself as well. Uh, Mr. Gordon was just adding that um, another common um, issue for our kids with their Chromebooks or iPads, particularly the Chromebooks, is losing their charger. Um, so just very, very important. I, I'm pretty sure that the district provides a case uh, and that if, if kids can be reminded to keep that charger in there at all, you know, as much as possible and not lose it because that's an added expense uh, as well. And Mr. Gordon is letting me know that um, Ms. Mrs. Quitek saying there's nothing on back order. So she was able to answer that question. Oh, great. Great. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, moving on to the public comment session then. General items not included in this agenda. We did not have anyone sign up for that. 
So we are on to committee of local items and information for the round table beginning with Jane. Uh, not much, just thank you as we continue to progress in this hybrid model um, and get kids more access to teachers, whether it be virtually in, in person or, or what have you. It's, uh, you know, it's a slow process, but uh, the progress has been good. And uh, thank you for all your good work. Nicole? Uh, just welcome everyone back. And I do like that we're finding ways to get the students in front of the teachers more and more. The more we can do that, the better for our kids, whether virtual, in person, however we can get them in front of teachers, the more the better. Two? Okay. Uh, Sue? I think I said enough. Thank you. Glenn? I got nothing other than Go Bills. Yay, Go we're Bills. We're supporting them. Woo! -hoo. Yes. Supporting with our bills here. Robin. I have nothing. Joy. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, I would just like to reiterate what Jay and Nicole said. Any way we can get the kids in front of teachers, whether virtually or in class, I think that that's great. And I am certainly in favor of that. And welcome back. And go bills. Yay. And happy birthday, Ashley, I think. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So should we ask Cheryl and Ruby if they have anything? Yes. Cheryl, thank you. Cheryl and Ruby? Oh, just bills. I'm all set. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have much else to say either. So. <laughs> all right. Dr. Graham. Thank you, Ashley. The only thing I'd like to add is that it is law enforcement appreciation. Well, I'm calling it week. It may have just been a day, but I'm calling it week. And I, it, just a nice reminder that we have school resource officers who work with us every day. Of course, we work very closely with the Erie County Sheriff's Department. We work very closely with the New York State Police, the Border Patrol, and the New York State Parks Police. So when you think about Grand Island and our great fondness and respect for our law enforcement, not only are we just talking about uh, the Grand Island Police or the Sheriff's Department, but we're very blessed to have the Border Patrol and New York State Police and the Parks Police as well. So uh, just I uh, want to share my great appreciation. And I know a lot of our teachers and faculty and staff have been uh, doing the same with our school resource officers. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, January 18th is Martin Luther King Day. No school. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. No school. January 26th is our next board of teaching meeting and work session. With that, if I could have a motion to adjourn the board meeting at uh, 8.48 p.m. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. Any abstentions? Motion carried 7-0. Have a good night, everyone. Aye. Good night. Uh, the 20, Aye. 25th, is it here or are we somewhere? Um, we are at well, I was just trying to get a great job. No school is 25th. No.